Hey there, Pimple Stoppers. In this video, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know to understand how to use topical retinoids to treat acne. We'll talk about why they're so useful when it comes to treating acne, how to use them, and how to avoid common side effects and pitfalls. I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board certified dermatologist and acne expert. And in this channel, I'm here to help you separate the science from the hype when it comes to acne care. Retinoids and retinols are chemical compounds that are related to vitamin A. They can help treat acne in several ways. First, they can help keep our skin cells from being stuck together and clogging up our pores. They also can help reduce inflammation, which we know is a key driver of acne. And then finally, they can also help to stimulate collagen production in the skin, which can be important when it comes to helping to fill in small acne scars. In addition, retinoids, because they help to turn over the skin, can help us get rid of dark spots faster, which can be a really important benefit of topical retinoids and retinols in the treatment of acne. When it comes to choosing a retinoid, we've got a bunch of options. Almost every major skincare brand has some over-the-counter retinol, and now Adapalene 0.1%, which used to be prescription only, is over-the-counter as well, under the brand names Differin and the roche Posay's Ethiclar. These tend to be the mildest of our topical retinoids and retinols. We can pick the over-the-counter ones. And over-the-counter adapalene can be a really nice place to start for those who are just beginning with a retinoid or retinol for acne. We also have four prescription strength retinoids available. There's adapalene in 0.1 or 0.3% prescription. There's also trenoin, which comes in a variety of strengths, and then tazeratine and triferatine. In general, it seems like trenoin and adapalene tend to be a bit milder, so they may not work as well, but they also have less dryness and irritation and other side effects, whereas tazeratine and triferatine tend to be a bit stronger. They can work a little bit better, but they may come with some more side effects like dryness and irritation. My personal favorite place to start is adapalene. It has several nice advantages. It's relatively gentle on the skin. It doesn't cause a lot of irritation. It also isn't photolabile. Unlike tretinoin, which you have to use at nighttime because the sun can inactivate it, adapalene doesn't have this problem. You can use it morning or night. Similarly, adapalene is stable with benzoyl peroxide, unlike tretinoin and some other retinoids. So you don't have to worry about if you're using adapalene and a benzoyl peroxide containing product at the same time, it's still gonna work just fine. For those who need a stronger retinoid, like for instance, those who have acne on their chest or back that often needs a stronger retinoid, or for those who just haven't gotten better with a milder retinoid but also aren't having a lot of side effects, I often like to use tazeratine. I think it can be stronger than adapalene or tretinoin, but at the same time, it seems like it's less irritating than triferatine in the limited data that we have comparing the two. Now, for those who are having trouble tolerating topical retinoids, there's also a polymeric emulsion lotion formulation of tazeratine and tretinoin, as well as a micro-encapsulated tretinoin and benzoyl peroxide combination product. In head-to-head -head studies, it seems like these tend to be less irritating than regular creams or lotions or gels. For instance, in a head-to-head -head trial comparing tazeratine lotion to tazeratine cream, the tazeratine lotion was half as irritating, but worked just as well. So while these versions may be more expensive, for those who have more sensitive skin and are having trouble tolerating a topical retinoid, they can be a good option to consider. When it comes to applying a topical retinoid, all you need is a small green pea-sized amount this is enough for your entire face and a similar amount you could use for your chest or for your back. When applying it, it can be hard to take such a small amount and spread it out over your whole face. And so what I recommend to do is you take that green pea amount and you just dab it around, little micro dots everywhere that you have acne, and then you rub it in in all these areas. Now when using a topical retinoid, it's important to use it over the entire area that you get acne. Topical retinoids are not a spot treatment. I like to think about them like preventing your future acne. So you wanna use them on everywhere that you get acne and it's really important to be consistent. It can take at least six to eight weeks to see effects from a topical retinoid. Before we get into managing side effects, please pop that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. This really helps us out a lot and I appreciate your support in helping us bring the highest quality acne and rosacea content to the community. As I've alluded to a couple of times during this video, the most common side effect with topical retinoids is dryness and irritation. And fortunately, we've got a bunch of strategies that we can use to help reduce this problem. The first is to start slow. Just start your topical retinoid or retinol two or three times a week. This is gonna give your skin a chance to build up tolerance to it and be better able to handle it over time. You'll notice that after a week or two, you'll be able to start increasing the frequency of use with the goal of getting up to using it daily over two or three weeks. In addition to starting slowly, make sure you're not using too much. 
you really only need that green pea-sized amount for the entire face. You do not need a lot of topical retinoid to get benefits from it. Another trick to reducing dryness is called the sandwich method. In this method, you just apply your favorite moisturizer, then the topical retinoid, and then your moisturizer again. Similar to those lotion and microencapsulation formulations of retinoids I mentioned earlier, this helps slow the release of that topical retinoid onto the skin and make sure it's evenly spread out across the skin. And this is gonna help reduce dryness and irritation. For those who are getting irritation around the corners of the nose or by the eyes, a strategy that can help here is to apply just a little bit of Vaseline or Aquaphor into these areas before applying the topical retinoid. And that's gonna help protect these sensitive areas of skin from irritation from the topical retinoid. Another feared side effect of topical retinoids and retinols is having purging or a flare of acne when you're first starting them. I've had many patients come to me and say, I'm afraid to start a topical retinoid because of this concern. Well, there are a bunch of strategies that we can use to try to prevent this as well. Just like starting slowly can help reduce irritation, it can also help reduce this initial flare of acne as well. In addition, with oral retinoids, we found that taking a non-sedating antihistamine like loratadine or cetirizine can help reduce the likelihood of having an initial flare or purging reaction. And I wouldn't be surprised if there might be a similar effect with topical retinoids as well, though those studies haven't been done yet. In addition, if there is some purging or flaring when starting a topical retinoid, don't despair. These are pimples that were gonna happen anyway. They are just coming up sooner. If you keep going, if you stick with it, you will start to get to your goals with that topical retinoid. So don't give up hope if you do have some initial flaring or purging, keep going. It takes some time, often six to eight weeks at least, to start to get benefits from topical retinoid use. Retinoids also make our skin more sensitive to the sun, so it's important to pair them together with a good sunscreen moisturizer every day. We've got some other videos on the channel that talk about sunscreen recommendations for those with acne and rosacea prone skin, but really what matters most is picking something that's SPF at least 30 to 50, that you like how it feels on your skin, and that's affordable. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. Leave a comment below to share your experiences with topical retinoids and retinols and to ask me your questions about acne. In addition, think about subscribing to this channel to stay up to date on the latest acne and rosacea content. And please give this video a like if you found it helpful so that we can share it with the community. See ya!